Hey guys, I'm Janet with Tudic Studios and I want to post a little video showing what I've been working on today. I kind of want to put a little homage out there to Mrs. Willis from the Fine Arts Center who has now passed on and God rest her soul. But she was awesome and, and very smart lady with metalworking and taught us metalworking at the Fine Arts Center in Greenville, South Carolina. And although her and I did butt heads a good bit back when I was a student, I was kind of one of those grungy punk rock kind of students and she didn't appreciate the rebellious side. I did learn a lot from her and I want to post this little video showing how uh, she showed us how to make your own silhouette dies for the hydraulic press back in 1998 when she said this was not a vastly used process by your little metalworking crafts types um, of hobbyists or whatnot. It was usually a process used by people in an underground community of metalworking. And now it seems like that there's a very broad interest in it. And we could probably thank wonderful people like Kevin Potter who make hydraulic presses affordable and also useful for the folks at home who want to make jewelry and metalworking projects. So what I'm going to do is, well, I'm going to introduce you to this really nice little hydraulic press. And what that does is uses these dies that I will make out of plexiglass. Now these dies, I will cut out, and usually you would cut them with a jeweler saw with a spiral scrolling saw blade, I think. But I've got a scroll saw now that I've purchased. It's 14 inches, and it is a total shop. And I like it. It's pretty cool. I got it used. I purchased it for, I think, about 150 off of a nice gentleman on an online yard sale in my area. And that was a score because they sell for like over 500 new. <clears throat> I understand that the PS Wood Shops makes a saw that is compatible. And even though these total shop saws are no longer for sale because that company went out of business, I understand that the belts and all the other parts of the machine are supposedly interchangeable with the PS Wood Shop scroll saw. So it would be easy enough for me to service my machine when the time comes and its needs be. Kevin Potter sells urethane. And Ms. Willis, back in the day, treated her urethane like gold and explained to us how important it was to not damage it. <laughs> because they're not just the most like affordable little things. Um, they're kind of high. You can probably use rubber, obviously, if you wanted to, but the urethane has an expandability and a flexibility that also resiliently pops back into its shape after the compression is over and it will dome up into your die and create a nice shape in your metal when it's annealed and put into the hydraulic press with the urethane and the die. So, what I have done is decided to make a nice stencil from the three inch circle and the seven and two inch uh, rectangle so that when I make my dies, they will fit right in to my contained urethane gizmo here or would fit right on my bracelet urethane there. How I made my stencil was with the backs of cereal boxes. We have where I cut a two inch by seven inch little stencil there. And then I also did my three inch one, the three inch circle. And then what I did was I realized you want to keep half an inch or just under half an inch of space inside of your dies where your cutout image will be so that it's not 
cut out too close to the edge. So what I have here is just shy of half an inch, just shy of half an inch, little additional stencils that I cut out. And what I do with those is I take my pencil and I draw, and then I take this, and then I draw again. And what I end up with are basically spots that I can illustrate what I want to put in to my die. And then I will cut that out with a scroll saw. And I am so sorry about my camera angle here. So these are some dies that I intend to cut out for my bracelet urethane, just generally speaking. And what I did was I picked up a lot of plexiglass, scraps, and about a quarter inch thick from Lowe's in the scrap pile, and they gave them to me. And then there was a couple other pieces that were really big, and the guy was like, really, you want them? Okay. So he gave me the whole pile for 50 cents, and you score them and snap them into usable strip sizes that are not too large. So what this is, is I basically drag the scoring tool that you would use to cut glass, and you drag it, and you drag it a couple of times along a straight edge, when you get a deep enough groove, you put your plexiglass on the edge of the table and you hold it down really good and you compress gently on the other edge and it should snap with the score edge groove up upwards. That should snap clean, usually. And then you would take printer paper and adhere it to your plexiglass using what I got from Dollar General anyways, but you can use any brand I'm sure, is a spray adhesive. And that will basically, on a large cardboard, you would put it on the floor and then you set down your plexiglass and you take this and you just lightly coat it, all your plastic, all your plexiglass, and then you take your printer paper and you lay it down on top of your plexiglass so that it sticks. And it's suggestible to wait a few seconds for it to get a little tackier, but not too long. And once it's on there, it's on there good. And then you just flip your piece back over and you take an exacto blade and trim the excess paper off. So then what you have there is printer paper adhered to your plexiglass. And that's extremely useful and awesome. Now I watched a YouTube video where another nice gentleman, and I will get the name for him to give him credit and put it in the comments section shortly. He was the one who said, that he's a scroll saw, he's a scroll saw guy, and he's like a craftsman who works with scroll saws to make art all the time, and he tries different things, and he's the one who suggested that process, so I would like to give credit to him, and I will put that in the comments, like I said, but oh, the other thing that you want to do is cover that with packaging tape over the paper before you cut it in a scroll saw, that keeps the paper from flying up while you're cutting out along the lines. So, of course, here now, let's see. We have the 14-inch scroll saw, and we're going to use, according to our friend on YouTube, and he suggested to use the number 7 Super Sharp Blades. And what I did is I ordered them off the Internet, and it came from P.S. Wood Suppliers, and it's a number 7 Super Sharp Supposedly well known enough that it's easily enough acquired wasn't very high. I think it was like under ten dollars for the dozen of blades and What you want to find in a scroll saw that makes it more useful is that it has a Quick change blade system that works very similar to your jeweler's saw when you have a jeweler's saw that you would you know clamp your blade in place with the two Turn nuts. Well, this is the same exact thing on my scroll saw here. I'm going to show you if I can get a good shot without that light interfering. But what you have is an Allen wrench un undoes this little clamp, and then that blade is loose. So how this goes is you would I <laughs> you would make your blade tensioner loose. And then this is loose enough that you would remove it from the bottom, right? Theoretically, that's the idea, right? You would pull it off the bottom and then it would come out the top. I mean, this is hard to do with one hand, and I've got to figure out a way to start filming where 
I wouldn't need to use just one hand to hold a camera, but we're doing what we can today. So that's that's exactly like a jeweler's saw frame is, except that you use an Allen wrench of very basic size. And I don't have the exact size, but it's like the most common one ever. And you probably have it laying around already. So here we go. Let me go ahead and reattach that really quick. So we have our saw blade. And then you tighten on your tensioner, and then you're supposed to plink, plink, plink until you get a good tension. And I'm sure with time I'll get to where I know exact tones of what to listen for <laughs> to know that it's ready. Um, so my experiment today is going to be to take that half-inch plexiglass. And I have the intention of cutting it with a scroll saw. And I have my dies that I intend to cut out. And I'm going to go with the simpler stuff today. Instead of cutting out my intricate ones, which is an adventure I intend to do. Hold on one second. One second. We're going to go with the simpler dies tonight. And then we're going to cut this really quick. And uh, it'll just be a situation where I will start a second video to show that. Because I would like to position the camera better. And so I hope you all tune in for the second part where we attempt to cut our own dies for the hydraulic press urethanes. Thank you, our own silhouette dies. Look up that video on Magic in a Metal. Thanks for tuning in.